Hey all you physicists, welcome to the next lesson in the physics, quantum physics playlist and today we are talking about quantum numbers which kind of confuses a lot of people. So since your teachers are kind of bad at explaining quantum numbers, I'm gonna try and do my best to uh, explain more in more detail and in uh, greater depth about what quantum numbers are. So um, in the last episode we talked about how the Bohr model was over overtaken by the um, wave mechanical model and so what one of the one of the things that came with it was a was a quantum number system of labeling electrons so each electron has its basic I mean has its own barcode I should say so these the barcode that I'm talking about is the quantum numbers so let me write it here each electron has a unique set so each one has a different set of quantum numbers and the reason why this is so is because um, electrons are are um, regula regulated by the um, Pauli exclusion principle I'm gonna write it in yellow to uh, make it stand out the Pauli exclusion principle which states that all fermions, and I will talk, I'll talk about more about what fermions and bosons are in a future episode, but what the Pauli exclusion principle, oh no, not A L, it's L E. L E. Um, what the Pauli ex exclusion principle says is that no two fermions can be in the exact same location, and by location, I mean they have the exact same quantum numbers. So, quantum numbers come in uh, a set of four numbers, and they are generally in this form. Um, the first one is your shell. So, um, I'm going to write it in uh, yeah, this color here. Shell. Your next one is your subshell, which is L. And then you have, I'll write the labels later. And then you have your orbitals, which is M sub L. And you have your spin, which is M sub S. And uh, let me just label it. Subshell, um, orbital, and lastly you have your spin, which is my favorite because it's, it's the simplest. Um, the shell can also be called the principal quantum number. So let me just break it up and go more in depth into each one of these. So let's start off with the uh, the shell. Let's start off with shell, and shell can start from n equals one. It goes all the way up to infinity. And another name for shell is the principal quantum number. I'm just going to use QN because quantum number is, going to, is kind of a pain to write out. Um, so the shell can go from n equals 1 all the way into infinity. And what n is, and I think a shell is one of the easiest to comprehend because it's almost the exact same as what you guys have been, have been learning for the Bohr Rutherford model. Uh, n basically di dictates the distance from the um, nucleus to the electron. So, for example, the Bohr Rutherford model, let me just bring it back to history, uh, bring it back to your, to your familiar Bohr Rutherford model, where you have the nucleus in center and you have electrons orbiting, and this is, let's say, n equals 1. And we know that n equals 2 has a bigger radius, and hence uh, a bigger distance from the nucleus to the orbit. So, the shell basically dictates the. Uh, the distance, the average, the average distance from the electrons to the uh, nucleus. So that is shell. Shell is pretty easy to comprehend. Now let's move on to subshell. I'm gonna use red, just to um, not use the same color all the time. Provide some variety here. And the subshell, as we said above here, the subshell is denoted by L. So subshell can go from zero all the way up to infinity. And yeah, so the basic correlation between shell and subshell is that L um, is basically n minus one, and it can also be called the secondary quantum number, or it can be called the angular momentum quantum number. Angular momentum quantum number. And what the subshell is is it describes the shape of the electron's orbital. So each um, orbital has its own shape and I'll talk more about that in a few, in a few seconds but um so the first shell n equals 1 let me just see tell you, um, show you guys how the shell and subshell relates so at n equals 1 
um, the n equals one shell has only has one subshell, which is l equals zero. For n equals two, we have actually two subshells, l equals zero and l equals one. And for n equals three, you guessed it, l equals zero, l equals one, and l equals two. So the basic, um, I guess, algorithm or formula for this this is that uh, for subshells, you can go all the way. F um, the l can can be um, less than or equal to n minus one. So let's say if your if your if n is equal to three, l can be zero all the way to two, which is three n minus one is two, and I should put here zero. So this is the basic formula for l. And l equals zero. And so let me talk, talk to you about the shapes of the, these um, orbitals. L equals zero um, is also called the uh, also called the s orbital. The s orbital. And what s stands for is actually sharp, but you might not need to know that. It's not really that important. It's called a sharp orbital. Um, and the 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 basic um, shape of the sharp, sharp orbital is your sphere. It's just a sphere. So imagine there's a nucleus in here, and then there's a sphere, there's a like spherical cloud um, that covers the nucleus. That's L equals zero. That's your basic one. Um, L equals one looks kind of different. It's more of a dumbbell shape, and L equals one is called the P subshell, which stands for principal sharp uh, subshell, the S orbital. Um, and what it looks like is more of a dumbbell shape, so you can see it like that, kind of thing, like that. And yeah, um, and there are basically three of, of those, but I'll talk more about that in the orbitals, which, which comes up next. L equals two is called the D so, um, orbital, and it was, it, it's almost similar to this, but just with four of those. And then L equals three, L equals three equals to the F orbital, which stands for fundamental. So S stands for sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental. And then we have G H, where the scientists just just stop labeling it by sharp, like by words that actually make sense. And now they now they just label them in alphabetical order. So L equals four is G, then H, and I, then J, K whatever so that's subshells for you let's move on to the next one which are the orbitals oops orbitals and these are denoted by m sub l which goes from negative one actually it goes from negative infinity to negative one zero plus one to all the way to infinity and this can also be known as the magnetic quantum number, which did I say it already up here? No, I did not. Okay, so the magnetic quantum number, quantum number, and the general um, relationship between orbitals and subshells is that um, the subshells basically can go from can go from um, negative l. To positive L. So, for example, um, for the S subshell, which is as we said up here, the S subshell. Where is it? S subshell right here. Um, I mean S orbital. Sorry, L equals zero. So at L equals zero, we have M L of what? Negative zero to positive zero, which is just zero. So at L equals zero, there is only one orbital. And this is just just a basic spherical shape. At L equals one, we have what? We have negative one, zero, to all the way to positive one. So we have three orbitals in this uh, in in the L subshell, and that's related like, to the shape actually. The reason why there are three here is because it um, the orbitals actually denote the orientation of the or of the orbital in space. So for example, negative one. Is actually in the z axis. So if you draw a coordinate plane, let me just use yellow because blue is kind of hard to see. If I drew a coordinate plane where this is um x, 
y and z um the negative one orbital i'm going to use a different color green maybe the negative one orbital is going to lie on the z axis so you can see it like that and then let me use a different color for zero we it's lying on the y axis so it's going to look something like that and then lastly um we can use light blue for this plus one is going to lie on the x axis so it's going to look that like that so that is what the orbitals mean it describes the orientation in space and let's let's do one more example of, of orbitals. L equals two. L equals two can come from negative two to negative one, zero, plus one, and plus two. And that's basically it for orbitals. Now the last one is probably the simplest one out of all, which is called the whoops spin. Which denoted by m sub s, which can only equal to plus half or minus half because electrons, oops. Because electrons have only a positive half or a negative half spin. I'll talk more about spins in a different video. Um, so that is why you can um, you can fit two electrons in each orbital. So that's how the spin relates to the orbital. Um, because there are two different spins, and hence two different sets of quantum numbers available, you can fit basically two electrons of different spins in each of these orbitals, in each one of these orbitals, you can fit two um, electrons of different spins, and hence they don't really have a, have the same set of quantum numbers because their spins are different. So let's just recap um, what we have learned throughout this whole lesson. Just a quick overview of what's happening. So once again, um, each electron has a unique set of quantum numbers because of the Pauli exclusion principle. And the set of quantum numbers comes in N, L, M, S, I mean M, L, sorry, N, M, S. Shell, subshell, orbital, and spin. So let, let me just draw a little chart for you, uh, just so you can get a quick overview of what's going to happen. I mean, of what's uh, going on, just a quick overview. Uh, so we can just grasp it better. So we have n here, we have l here, we have m here, and we have the total number of electrons. Um, uh, number of electrons here. So at n equals one, we know there is only zero. L's there's only l equals zero there because remember the formula above formula above for subshell is from 0 all the way to n minus 1 and n, and n minus 1 for 1 is just 0 and we know that since m is the formula for m is negative l to plus l so it's just positive it's just 0 and since of and because of spin and what a spin says is that um, you can basically fit two electrons in each orbital so how many orbitals are here? 0 so we can fit two electrons in the zero orbital. N equals two has how many L's? We have zero and we have one because remember L can um, for N equals two L can be zero or one, and uh, and at L equals zero same thing as above zero, and we have two electrons here. For L equals one we have negative one zero plus one, and since we have one two three orbitals we can fit three times two. Which is six electrons in the in the um, p subshell. Let me just p here, and this is s. Remember s. And altogether, we can fit eight electrons in the n equals two level. Now n equals three, we can fit zero, which is the s orbital again, one, which is the p orbital, and two, which is the d orbital. And for zero, same as above, zero for one. Um, it's negative one, zero plus one, and for two, it's negative two, negative one. 0 plus 1 and plus 2 and for n at m equals 0 we can fit 2 electrons because 2 times 1 orbital for the n uh, for the m equals I mean for the l equals 0 um, subshell there are 3 orbitals 3 times 2 is 6 same as above and for l equals 2 we have 1 2 3 4 5 orbitals 5 times 2 electrons each is 10 electrons and in total we can fit 18 so we can see here 
um, how the whole thing is laid out, how it, they're all connected to each other. And yeah, so hopefully you guys uh, can have a have better grasp of what quantum numbers are and how they relate to each other, how shells relate to subshell and how subshells relate to uh, orbitals and how orbitals relate to the spin. So yeah, hopefully you guys have had fun while doing this and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.